legend of the melon heads has been a popular myth in the local area that has been passed down for generations. Where did these stories come from? What does the felt mansion have to do with it? Is there any truth to the legends? And just what is a melon head? Can you describe the melon head legend for us? Yes, well, I'll try my best. I think it originated back with, at the Felt Mansion. And, well, it wasn't the Felt Mansion back then, but it was a, like, I don't know if it was a, not an insane asylum, but a place where they put people with mental and physical disabilities. And I don't even know back when, but rumor has it is that they, um, kids with water on the brain, and I don't even know the technical medical terminology with that, they were housed there, and um, either some misfortune happens with the facility, and the people um, were kind of just left to their own devices and have been living in the forest near the Belt Mansion. How did you get involved with the Belt Mansion project? Well, my husband and I were hiking in the Saugatuck Dunes State Park, and I had no idea that the mansion was here, but we decided to hike out into the clearing, and we got out there, and here was this beautiful, well, I thought it was beautiful, but it was boarded up and um, looked like it was rather dilapidated and uh, abandoned mansion, and so... I found out that Lake Town Township owned the mansion and I went to them and I asked if I could head up a community project and they eventually said yes and started the project and today it's rented out almost every weekend for different events, weddings and everything. There are several versions of the legend. Each version includes the Felt Mansion and the surrounding area. What is this place and how is it connected to the Melonheads? The mansion was built in the 1920s by a man named Dorfelt, and he was the inventor of the comptometer. And the comptometer is the first adding machine that can do all four math functions. And so he had every bit of uh, as much influence on business as like Bill Gates did in the 1980s. He built his comptometer in the 1880s and became a millionaire. And he built this as his summer cottage. How does the history of the Felt Mansion tie into the legend? Probably has, the tie-in probably has to do with when the seminary was there. Um, it was you know first it was the Felt Mansion was Dorfeld summer home. Then after that it became the seminary building. Then after that it became the state police post, and now it becomes owned by Lake Town as a rental facility. So it's gone through some changes through its, its, its life. Um, I expect that those, the time period when the seminary was there and they had students out there is when these folklores began, but I really don't know. I don't know. I've never seen one. Do you remember where you first heard this legend? I heard it from um, a woman who used to live in Douglas. She's a friend of the family. And she had asked me when I got the job in Saugatuck if I had ever heard of the melon heads. And I said I had it, and she was explaining it to me. And it was freaking me out the whole time. <laughs> I grew up in Fenville. 
Where did you first hear so, this legend? Uh, we used to go out there looking for the, the myths as I was your age, uh, high school students, and it was just something to do out in the woods, uh, what became the state park. Uh, but you know they're not there anymore. They've all, they've all been moved away. Uh, because uh, you know, when the state park was created in 1975 or 76, the state of Michigan bought all that property for the state park. And when they did that, they tore down some old cabins that were out there in the woods, and they closed up some of the caves and such. So when they did that, they displaced all the melon heads. So when they displaced them like that, they had to relocate them. So they moved them all to Lansing and gave them jobs in state government and they worked in the DNR. They lived somewhere by the Felt Mansion out in the Elegant Woods. And I heard that there was an um, insane asylum, and they cut the funding, and the doctor let these kids with this swelling of the brain kind of syndrome. They had to get, like, let out, and that's, I mean, it's sad. They, apparently, they live out there and eat people. I Do you don't, know anyone I don't who know has actually anyone seen that actually the literally claimed that they have actually seen them. I mean, I know I've talked to a few students before about it, and they said, oh, yeah, so-and-so was out there, and they heard people, you know, they heard something in the woods, or they claimed they saw something in the woods running around. But as far as there's any truth to those stories, I don't, I don't know. So but we did find one person who has had an experience. Away, and she stopped in the parking lot, and they were looking around, and before, it used to be a, um, I think it's a seminary for um, boys. They used to go there for, like, it was like an all-boys thing. And so, she was out there, and it was dark out, and something, like, first tapped the front of her hood, and she used, back then, the car's really long, so, like, she couldn't see in the darkness, because it's pitch black out there, what it was. But then, um... It jumped on top of her car with all her friends in it and started banging on the top so she had no idea what it was and she was freaking her out and her friends and they started screaming and so she backed it up really fast and they drove out of there and went for miles and miles never looked back had no idea what it was and to this day they have no idea what it was why do you think it's such a popular story to keep telling I think because it's it's scary, and um, I think because there's some there could be some truth to it as far as it makes sense that there was this used to be a home for people with mental and physical disabilities, and um, I don't know. I think because people always just come up with these stories. Like I always hear about stories of people saying they've seen the mountain heads or they've been out in the woods out there and have heard people or things out in the woods, so I think that's why. And I think also with um, the resurgence of like horror, like true horror documentary type films like The Blair Witch Project, I think that really um, kept urban legends like that going.